And I've been stuck in this place for a few weeks now. This guy, Dr. Rose, he has been working me after I was attacked heading home. Yeah, I don't remember it very clearly, but what I can remember is a sharp pain in my neck, everything going dark and waking up in the hospital. I've been having severe anxiety lately and it's gotten to a point where I've blacked out a few times. Yeah, I guess the last straw was when the police found me, about to jump off of a building after one of those blackouts. After a 72 hour hold, I ended up in this fancy schmancy residential treatment facility. Dr. Rose is nice and his English accent is nice to listen to, but sometimes it feels like he watches me for longer than necessary. I feel like I'm being observed under a microscope whenever he's around. Maybe it's because of how vivid his eyes are. Or maybe he's just unsettling. It's good to see you again. I'm pleased that you've been making an effort to arrive on time to your appointment. I really appreciate it. Are you still dealing with nightmares? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me about them? It's the same as always. I try to leave here and I always wind up back in my room. Although sometimes it feels like I'm paralyzed and being stared at. It's freaky to be honest. Yeah, that does sound pretty freaky. Uh, I'm spooked by sleep paralysis, too. Yeah, <laughs> I used to know I'm not the only one with a sleep paralysis demon. That's the reason why I can't take too much di diphenhydramine. I owe the hat man money and I don't want to see him. I do like it when Rose is a little goofier than me. Makes him feel less soft-putting. Are there any details that stand out to you aside from your sleep paralysis demon? Uh, Rose's, I guess. The walls are covered in them. The doors are blocked by huge patches of them. Stuff like that. I hope that doesn't say anything about me. It probably does, you weirdo. I suppose the question now would be, what compels you to try to leave here? I want out. I'm sick of feeling crazy. You aren't crazy. Being here makes me feel crazy. You aren't. I assure you. You've just been having trouble coping with life outside these walls. And after your attack... How could you not? Anyone in your position will be struggling to process what happened. That does not make you crazy. If I'm not crazy, then why can't I leave? I just want to keep you under observation for a bit longer, love. Can I be honest? The food here sucks. The meds you put me on uh, makes me want to throw up. You've been living in my head rent free for the last couple of weeks and it's driving me nuts. <laughs> what? I know, I know. It's weird, but... I needed to get it off my chest, Doctor. Wait, are you saying you... You like me? Uh, yeah, I think I am. I sure hope I am. I don't know if it's a crush or just weird projections of feelings onto you. It's not uncommon for our patients to develop feelings for the doctors and nurses. I know, I've heard of Florence Nightingale. Maybe that's why I feel so crazy here. Crazy in love with you, Doctor. It's not crazy to experience feelings of attractions to someone. But you're always on my mind. Infatuation is like that, but it doesn't make you crazy. It just makes you human. Yeah, I'm sorry, I should have brought it up. What if it's what if it's more than just infatuation? What if I'm like down with the sickness, doctor, and that sickness is you? You are you serious? I am. Oh, what am I gonna do with you? Really? You ought to be more judicious when you make confessions like these. What do you mean? You can't just go around telling every psychiatrist that you're in love with them. I don't tell every psychiatrist that. I only told you. And that other doctor. I forgot what's his name. Then do you plan to take responsibility? I beg your pardon? I'll have you begging for more than that if you're serious. Well, what do you mean? Slow down, doc. Alistair. Huh? It's my name. Uh... My first name, I mean. Alistair. I like it. I could get used to hearing you use my name like that. But isn't there, like, an ethical worry? I'd rather not think about ethics, if I'm being honest with you. You're not the only one who has found themselves drawn to someone they shouldn't be. It's not nice to make fun of people like that, Alistair. I'm not making fun of you, Lion. I'm quite serious. You're not worried about the power imbalance. You're always free to say no to anything that happens between us. I would also ask that you stay by my side. How can I do that when I'm stuck here, though? Rest assured, my love, I have ways of whisking you away from here. And how can we stay together after that? This could completely trash your career. It's very sweet of you to worry, but you don't need to. 
I can take care of everything. Wait, what? I've left you for the moment. I've laid eyes on you. <laughs> oh my god, Dr. Alistair looks so freaking goofy like this. I love him. And to think that you feel the same way about me. It's all that I could have ever hoped for. What are you saying? Paperwork is so easy to falsify after all. Alistair, you're starting to freak me out. Sorry about that, love. I just mean to say that I'll find a way. You're worth it after all. You, you can't just stay, say stuff like that and expect me to be normal about it. Who said I expected you to be normal? I love you exactly the way you are, Lion. You promise? You will just leave me alone once I'm out of here? I promise. I would never abandon you like that. Others might, but not me. You swear it? I swear it. If it isn't too presumptuous, may I kiss you? Uh, yeah, sure. To my surprise, he really does lean in to kiss me. It's tender and sweet, but I can taste the desperation on his tongue. Part of me wonders how long he's wanted this. His lips are softer than I thought they'd be, and I didn't expect him to be so prone to nipping. There's a voice in my head telling me that says this isn't how things should be, but the longer our lips are pressed together, the less I care. Leave it all to me, love. I'll take care of you. To my annoyance, he pulls away briefly to whisper reassurances in my ears. But he's quick to get back to kissing me like a man dying of thirst. Man, Doctor, like Dr. Alistair is so damn thirsty. He promises me the moon, and I believe him. Maybe I am crazy. But it's a lovely kind of insanity, so I can accept it. Good end? Secret sealed with a kiss. So what if I don't kiss you? I understand. You sure? I told you, Lion. You can always say no to anything we do together. I don't mind waiting for you to be ready to take that step, as long as you're comfortable. True to his words, he doesn't pressure me. Really, you have no idea how happy I am. It's a bit jarring. What is, my love? Just having these feelings being reciprocated. In my defense, you're not only ridiculously attractive, but you're also charming and engaging. Are you sure you're talking about me, Alistair? Only you could captivate me like this. So, does this mean I get to go home? I do want to keep an eye on you for a bit longer. Can you hold out until your medications have stabilized? I suppose. Wouldn't be too much longer, love. Don't worry. In the meantime, perhaps you can start coming up with some ideas for a proper first date. Alistair Rose is by far the strangest man I've ever met. I know on some level that this isn't right, but I'm past the point of caring. If this unstable doctor does want to love me, then I'll let him. Good then? A caged bird leered with promises of freedom. Somehow I have a feeling that this doctor isn't all he seems. But then again, like I did read the game page. So yeah, this this doctor is probably not a doctor. So what if instead of saying it's more than infatuation, I'll say that I should have brought it up. It's quite all right. I'm not in the business of judging others. I hope this doesn't make things awkward. Even if it did, it's important to be able to move beyond a bit of awkwardness. Yeah, but I don't want you to think I'm weird. Who catches feelings for a psychiatrist in a grippy sock jail? Psh, grippy sock jail? That's a good one. It makes sense, though. I cut leaf and I have more grippy socks than I know what to do with now. You do get to keep those when you go home, you know. Oh, goody. My sock drawer runneth over. Honestly, a sense of humor really is something. If I don't crack jokes at my own expense, the universe will do it for me. I suppose there is some truth to that. Although it does smack of grim resonation. Is it grim resonation or acceptance of my life being a disaster? I wouldn't call your life a disaster. You've had a rough patch, but you're self line. Give yourself some grace. I suppose it's hard to see how my life is in a disaster given everything that's happened to me recently, you know? That's why you have people in your life who can look at it objectively and steer you in the right path. You mean I have you? Yeah, you have people who love you and care about you. Don't be so quick to discount them. The truth is, I haven't told them about what happened. I don't want to burden them. The people who cherish you will not find it to be a burden. But what if they do? What if it's too much for them? What if... Go on. It's alright. What if I'm too much? I can empathize with that feeling. It's important to take a moment to ask yourself if what you're feeling is the result of distorted perception, though. I mean, it's my emotional damage. I shouldn't make it their problem. We aren't meant to bear such things alone. A burden shared is a burden halved, or so the saying goes. I'm scared. What scares you? 
These days, everything. What's really scaring you, love? Being alone? I know, I sound like a child, but... The fear of being abandoned or alone is completely understandable. It's not childish at all. Maybe this is why I like you. Huh? <sighs> you listen here! You, you don't make me feel like I'm wrong for feeling one way or another. That's what I'm here for, love. Can we just pretend this conversation never happened? We can't. It's important to take accountability for things we say. There isn't a way to delete messages outside of messenger apps, you know? I know, I just don't want you to look at me differently. Love, nothing is going to change how I see you. Really? You're radiant. Anyone can see it. Uh, Dr. Rose? Uh, can you take me back to my room? What if it's more than infatuate- Can you take me back to my room? Certainly. Before we conclude, would you please take this? Huh? It's a medication that should help you st stay calm throughout the day. The hope is that it'll help you with your anxiety. It might make you feel a bit dizzy for a while, but if it gets particularly bad, let me know immediately. Easy enough. I take the pill he hands me and swallows it without second thought. When you say dizzy, how dizzy are we talking? Well, it varies, but the worst reaction I've seen has been fainting spells here and there. Oh, hooray. Now we can add concussion to my list of things that are wrong with me. Hey now, fainting spells aren't a guarantee. Also, I feel I should warn you. It may affect your memory a bit and you may feel disoriented. If you start having problems with it, please, let me know right away, okay? Sounds fair. I'll give him credit. He's a perfect gentleman the entire time he walks me to my room. Alright, here we are, safe and sad. Uh, thanks. Those meds kicking in? I think so. I'm gonna lay down. Of course. Have someone wake you up when it's time for dinner, alright? Uh-huh. I can't keep my eyes open. As soon as my head makes contact with a soft pillow, I'm almost already asleep. Sweet dreams, love. I'll see you soon. Neutral and hollow. Hollow? How empty am I feeling, Frick? So what if at this point, when he asks if we actually like him, we say no? Oh, heavens, I misread that one. Yeah, a bit. My apologies, love. Is there anything I can do to help alleviate some of that? I realize that if I'm the source of distress, it may be complicated, but... I mean, it's not like there's another psychiatrist here who can treat me, right? Well, there are other psychiatrists, but I need to see about switching with them. We try avoiding that. Uh, as we want to foster a sense of stability for our patients. Makes sense. Aside from that, is there anything I can do for you? Uh, wait, what? The meds you have me on have been making my stomach cramp really badly. I really prefer to leave now. Uh, let's go with the first option. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll see what I can do to make sure that you have something your stomach can handle. This really is for your safety, you know. I just want to help you. You say that, like... A few gaps in my memory are going to incapacitate me completely. It's not that. It's the blackouts that have me worried for you. I can handle them. Can you? You tried to buy one of the nurses the other day, you know? That's generally not behavior that flies outside of here. Are you saying that flies in here? It doesn't really fly in here either. You were sedated afterwards, remember? How could I forget? Nurse Kelly still won't come near me. I have no memory of such an event. Wait a minute. Why am I saying that I'm the one who can't remember things when I clearly do remember them? Is the doctor the one I should be suspicious of or do I need to be suspicious of myself? Cheeky. Whilst that is charming, it doesn't address the real problem. That said, your sharp wit does make a company quite enjoyable. Hmm. What? Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but this is kind of freaking me out. Yeah, I just meant that you're fun to talk to. You're very vivacious, which is a good thing. You can't just hold me hostage in this psych ward because you like me. What are you on about? You're not being held hostage, love. As I've explained, you're under observation. It's only until we can be certain you aren't a danger to yourself or others. Then, what was with that comment? You're agitated. I apologize. No! No, duh, I'm agitated! I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said any of that. It was unprofessional. Uh, I forget it. Let's just get this appointment over with so I can leave. Again with the leaving. I told you, you aren't ready yet to be discharged. I just want to go back to my room. This conversation has left a weird taste in my mouth. Fine, I want you to take this matter 
I want you to take this medication first, though. You've been very stressed today, and these should help you relax. I swallow the meds he takes me. Anything to get back to my room faster. I really do apologize for upsetting you. That wasn't my intent at all. It would be weird if you didn't mean to. Isn't your job to do the literal opposite? Fair enough. That being said, it's more like I help you come up with coping methods to handle your trauma. Since I'm playing two roles as both your psychiatrist and therapist here, that means I'm trying to help through a combination of medication and dialectical behavioral therapy. Which is what these meetings are about, right? Correct. I really am sorry for snapping like that. I know, love. Don't worry. I'm tougher than I look. No harm done. If you say so. Yeah, go back to my room now. Of course. Let me escort you. I go to stand up, but everything suddenly feels really off. <sighs> Forget I mentioned, love. Uh, those mats will make you feel a bit woozy. Wait, hold on. Oh dear, are you quite alright? I need to get away from him, but my legs feel like pudding. Here, let me. Uh, doctor? I'll take care of you. I am your doctor, after all. It took quite a bit of work to get you here, you know? I had to figure out just the right dosage for you. Uh, just from what I could remember of you in that coffee shop. What's this freak thing? Is he- Ah, don't worry. You won't remember any of this ugliness. Soon. It'll be nothing more than a bad dream that you can tell me all about. And I'll be here to patiently listen to you and soothe those anxieties away. Let go. It's a shame though, really. I would love to tell you about how you captivated me from the start. Perhaps another time when you're more receptive. Oh god, I can't keep my eyes open. Just close your eyes. Let me handle everything from now on. Those nightmares of yours will become the sweetest dreams of me soon enough. I promise. Bad end. No salvation in the truth. Okay, so I'm held captive. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said any of that. It was unprofessional. Well, you're right about that. You really shouldn't have. With all of that being said, it's clear that you aren't ready for discharge yet. What are you playing at? I just want to be sure that you're safe and stable before we let you leave. I am safe and I'm stable. You just became agitated and very suddenly. Is that really the behavior of someone who's genuinely stable? I guess it isn't. Talk me through what you're feeling right now. Look, it just came off as you're holding me here because you like me. It made me feel anxious. I'm sorry. I thought you might appreciate me being more candid with you. Look, I think I just... It caught me off guard. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get snippy with you. I get it. I do feel like this proves my point. You might be right. I need to chill out. Yeah, I'm sorry. Being here is more stressful than you think. I appreciate the honesty. I don't understand how an unfamiliar environment can be stressful. Since we're being very honest with one another, I suppose I may as well tell you. The truth is, I really don't have any plans on letting you leave me. Don't worry. I'll make sure we can be together, love. I'll smuggle you out if I have to. I'm sure you'll come to love me just as much as I love you. Won't you? He's making me nod my head. Just freaking freak. We have all the time in the world. As long as you're here, we can keep trying. Let's get you back to your room. We can continue our chat tomorrow. And the day after, if need be. As many days as it takes for you to fall into my arms and stay there. Sweet dreams, my love. That end. Fractured daydream. Anyway, that was Metanoia. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this for yourself, link to game will be in the description below. I was really hoping that there was going to be an ending where you could actually escape the doctor, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I did like some of the more horrific endings in this. Like, I feel like we don't have enough horror in Yandere visual novels. Oddly enough, oddly enough, there's just not enough horror in Yandere visual novels, and this kind of scratches the right edge for me. But anyway... Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.